guys? It's Austin from Yu-Gi-Oh! Theory. Uh, today I have a deck profile for my Dark Lords. I had a deck profile for my Dark Lords up on my channel, but I accidentally deleted it when I was uh, trying to edit some other video or something. I was trying to mess with some other video's comments or some junk. But I accidentally deleted it, so I thought I'd remake it, I guess. I mean, it's slightly different from the other one, but it's almost exactly the same. So if you saw the other one, you don't have to watch this one, I guess. Well, you don't have to watch it at all <laughs> anyway, but... Uh, if you saw the other one, there's no real need to watch this. It's just like slightly different, but uh, let's get into it. So the Dark Lords are pretty good. I like them a lot. Actually, they're like a uh, really good rogue. Uh, they could be competitive in like the right format or if they got a few more cards, but they're just really good in general. Uh, so first you have three Ix Shield. Um, Ix Shield is basically your main draw card. You discard it plus a Dark Lord card and draw two cards. Uh, and it's pretty good level nine. Uh, or is it a level... I think it's a level 10, never mind. Yeah, it's a level 10. Uh, 2900 defense, pretty good defense, hard to get over by a lot of decks. So it's overall just a pretty good card. Uh, next, you run three Superbia. This is how you special summon out of your, uh, of your graveyard so freely. Uh, whenever it's special summon, you can special summon another Dark Lord monster from your graveyard except Superbia. It's just really good. Uh, next, you run two Nastin. Nastin is like a really easy way just to get something on the board to get some plays started. Uh, you discard um, two Dark Lord cards, especially summon him from your hand. Uh, oh, and by the way, um, Dark Lord Ixchil and all the other like big Dark Lords, they can uh, copy a Spellard's traps, like a Dark Lord Spellard trap effect, uh, during either player's turn uh, from the graveyard and apply it. And uh, even if you've already activated that spell or trap that turn, you can do it again because this is a separate effect that just copies it. Uh, but yes, yeah, same thing with Nastin, he has the same effect. Uh, where he can copy uh, Dark Lord spells and traps in the graveyard. Uh, next, you run um, two Amdisk. I think uh, Amdisk, you discard two Dark Lord cards, and I think you add a Dark Lord card from your graveyard to your hand. Oh, no, no, no. You discard it plus a Dark Lord card, and you can add a Dark Lord card from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, but the really good thing about Amdisk is he also has the bottom effect. That's why you run him mainly at two because he has the bottom effect and he's a little easier to get out being a level 6 you can just tribute one Dark Lord monster and summon him if you just have like kind of a dead hand uh, next you run two Zerato uh, Zerato is really good too um, he's really good you know making uh, overlays for 8's um, and also uh, his effect where you can discard I think a Dark Lord card or something like that uh, and you nuke your opponent let's see you send one Dark, Dark Monster from your hand to the graveyard and you destroy all monsters your opponent controls uh, and then once returned in the end phase, this effect was, was activated. You have to destroy Dark Lord Zerato. So you can nuke your, you can basically write Geki your opponent, uh, and it doesn't say that you can't attack. So and he has 2800, so you can kind of just kill your opponent really quickly just with Dark Lord Zerato if you have a Dark Lord or a Dark Monster in your hand to discard. So it's just really good in general, and it's a level eight, so it's superbia, so it helps out for trade in. Uh, next for two of you run two Dark Lord uh, Ukubak. Uh, what it does when it's normal summon, you can send a Dark Lord card from your deck to the graveyard. Uh, so it's just really good. Basically a foolish burial. Um, and it's just overall really good. Uh, next, you can run one Tesla Poco. Uh, the main reason you run them is uh, for the bomb effect and being able to copy stuff. But being able to discard to protect your Dark Lords is not bad. It does come up every once in a while, and it is still worth running at the appropriate uh, one because just because it comes up. I only won one Christia. I actually don't really like Christia that much. It's kind of hard to pull off the effect for where your opponent can't special summon having four fairies in the graveyard because you're like always manipulating your graveyard so it's kind of hard to keep like a four in there. Uh, and also it's it's not a dark. It kind of messes up everything with your uh, lure of darkness and stuff. It's a light, so it kind of messes with that. It does work with trade in, though. That's the only reason I run it. I'm thinking about taking it out and running just three Zerato, but uh, I still like the option of being able to do that. It just doesn't come up often enough for me. I, 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 that's just my opinion. Um, next, uh, Hand Traps. You're in three Ash Blossom. I'm still waiting on my other one to come in, but for now, just like three um, Proxy Ash to Blossom over here. Um, next, you run two Ghost Bell. Uh, this card is really good. Um, I prefer it over Ghost Ogre right now just because there's a lot of decks that manipulate the graveyard and it also ensures that my Ash Blossom uh, plays are always safe from Call by the Grave. But since no one's playing Gamma anymore, Call by the Grave is like the go to and this is like the best stop to Call by the Grave. 
Uh, it can be Bricky drawing both of them at the same time, but even Ghost Bella by itself is really good. It helps uh, stop like a bunch of graveyard heavy decks like uh, Burning Abyss, Dark Lord, uh, Blue Eyes, mostly a bunch of Rogue. But it does have its uh, like times in meta, like against Goki, you can stop the rematch, and you can stop some other stuff. But it's just a really good card, and I just really like it. Uh, and that's it for monsters, so we're just going to move on to spells. Uh, pretty good size monster count, um, also a lot of spells too. You run three banishment, it's basically the searcher, and you can activate two banishment in one turn by just copying it. Uh, actually, you can activate three if there's more than one banishment in the graveyard. Uh, so it can get pretty crazy, but still, it is really good. Um, next, you run three Dark Lord Contact. Dark Lord Contact is really good too. Uh, just special summons from the graveyard. Special summons in defense though. Uh, and this is also like just a, a free um, just special summon. And then you can pretty much uh, just copy it again and again if you have two. But uh, if you copy its effect to summon a Superbia, you don't get to use Superbia's effect to summon another monster because it misses timing. So uh, someone commented that on the last video, and uh, I read into it, and that is in fact true. It, does, it misses its timing. It says when this card is summoned. If it said if this card is summoned, it would work, but it doesn't, so it doesn't work. Uh, so yeah, that's just a quick thing on that. Next, you're in three Allure of Darkness. Uh, the whole deck is dark besides the Hand Traps and Christia, uh, and that's only uh, six cards, I guess. So most of the time, you can use Allure of Darkness. I've had times where I've activated like three Allure Darknesses in one turn plus like a trade-in. And it's just like, whoa. When your hand has so many cards in it, you can do so much. Uh, even though you did lose a lot of monsters in the process. Like you can make a really, really big board. But if it doesn't like like plan, like plan pan out how you want, it could like crash in on itself and get kind of glass cannony situation type stuff. But uh, just try not to overextend. Try to just get what you need and then make your plays. That's just my advice. Uh, next, I run three trade in, uh, three trade in. Most there's like, um, I think there's six targets for it, so you you, just, you can get it off most of the time. Uh, just try not like to banish your Zerato if you have another option, just in case you do draw into a trade in. Uh, the Allure is much better than the trade in, but the trade in is also really good. Being able to discard cards like Superbia and Zerato, so you can special summon them back, uh, nuke your opponent's board, make a Hope Harbinger, and then they're just like, wow, uh, what am I going to do against a Hope Harbinger? So, I mean, it's just really good. Uh, next, I only run two Foolish Burial Goods. Being able to send anything, but these are like hard once per turn. So if you draw, if you draw multiple of them, they're really bricky. And uh, sometimes I'd rather just draw the spell that I wanted instead of Foolish Burial Goods. So that's kind of just like where I come from, from that position, sort of. Uh, but overall, it's not bad. It's pretty good. Um, that's it for spells. Uh, pretty good bit of spells. More monsters, though. Uh, now for traps. Uh, you don't run very many traps, but the ones you do run are really good. Uh, you run Rebellion. I believe Rebellion destroys. Yeah, you send one Dark Lord monster from your hand or face up from the, your field to the graveyard. Destroy one card on the field. Uh, you can only activate one Dark Lord Rebellion per turn. Again, you can copy it, do it multiple times. But uh, this is non-targeting destruction. Uh, so it's really good for getting rid of things like, uh, I guess, Chaos Max Dragon comes to mind. Because I don't think it can be targeted. I'm not sure if it can be destroyed by card effects, but I know it can't be targeted. Uh, but yeah, that's just really good. Um, next, you run two enchantment. You basically do the same. This has the same cost, except you take control of their monster, and this doesn't target or destroy, so it gets around things that can't be targeted or destroyed. Uh, so even if Chaos Max Dragon can be uh, or can't be destroyed or targeted, you can just steal it and then attack into your opponent with 4,000. So it's pretty wild. Uh, and next, I run one Epidemic, uh, wait, what was it? Eradicator Epidemic Virus. Uh, it's really good. This is super devastating against, like, Sky Strikers and, like, uh, Paleo and just anything that uses a lot of spells or a lot of traps. It's just really, really devastating against if you call the right thing. And for three turns, man, it's, it's really, really bad. <laughs> it's a terrible card. Like, I've had it activated on me while playing this deck, and it's just like, wow, I can't really do a whole lot. You can still copy the the effects of the spells with your monster effects, uh, I guess. Same thing, like if you're under Imperial Order, you can still copy the effects. Uh, but it's just really, it's just, oof, it's bad. It's bad. It's not as bad in this deck because they go to the graveyard, so I kind of want them to. And then I just copy them, but it still is bad. But yeah, that's it for the main deck. Now to the extra deck. Okay, uh, I'll go one Dante. 
uh, Dante comes up sometimes when you have two Uka box and you can you know just uh, mill and you know hopefully you get something in the graveyard you want because this is a graveyard centric deck so most of the monsters are good in the graveyard all the spells pretty much are good in the graveyard or the dark lord spells at least so uh, Dante does come in handy sometimes uh, I'll play one break board or not break board break sword uh, <laughs> it comes in handy too just clearing you know stuff off if you want to uh, next I run two zombie stein uh, zombie stein is super good being able to negate anything uh, you do have to discard a card switch it to defense uh, and attach one so you have to there's like three costs in it but it's usually super worth it if you negate the right thing uh, next you run one hope harbinger because uh, it's also really good um, being able to negate spells and traps I mean that's pretty good or maybe it's just spells yeah it's just spells never mind but being able to negate spells is really good still uh, then you run the spider package with uh, pain gainer and Ravenous Tarantula and Seven Cents. That's the only one I didn't have to read. <laughs> but yeah, just the spider package. Then you run um, Sky Palace Gangardia. That's what I'm going to go with. I don't know how to say that. Then you're going to run uh, one uh, Super Dreadnought Dora, dude. You know, he's pretty good for uh, stopping stuff from being targeted. Um, this is really good for destroying cards, if, I don't, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I don't really use it very much. Okay. Okay, so you detach a card, destroy a card, and then you uh, burn your opponent for a thousand. Uh, the seven sins have a bunch of different effects. Some of all of them I've used before. I think besides maybe pain gainer, I don't think I've used his, or maybe I did. I don't. I can't really remember. Seven sins is really good though, being able to destroy two cards. I think that's what it does. Uh, I haven't like personally dueled with this deck in a little while, but I remember most of the effects. And in the duel, I read all the cards before I use them, so it's not that big of a deal. Uh, so next for links, uh, one bore load, uh, bore load's really good. So and you can make them. So every once in a while, uh, and usually when you do make them, it comes in very clutch or you're very desperate. So that's just what it is. Uh, one of the triple burst, I think that's triple burst dragon. Yeah, triple burst dragon. Uh, he's okay. He has okay arrows. Uh, you can run a different link three if you want. He just he's just kind of helpful sometimes. Um, being able to like like negate stuff. I kind of have a big problem with Crystal Wing. I absolutely hate Crystal Wing. So this is just like what I have for Crystal Wing. Uh, next one, Goblin. Uh, it also comes up. And discarding cards isn't bad in this card in this deck, so uh, sometimes it helps you. Uh, one of uh, this dude, again, discarding cards doesn't hurt you, so Cerberus isn't bad. And then one Phoenix. Uh, you could probably put some better links in here. There's just not like a whole lot of links that go with this deck. Uh, but the, you might have some better choices if you want. Uh, but yeah, that's it with the deck profile. If you guys liked it, uh, please like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. Um, I should be putting up like two videos a day because I uh, recorded a video like a day or two ago and I never put it up. So um, so whichever one gets put up first is just uh, whatever, I guess. But go check that out if you're interested. And I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.